Okay, first things first. On this particular TV, it's the EF9500 is what we're gonna look at later uh, on the C1. If you go to picture settings and where you see the game optimizer setting, you go down to advanced settings and you have a setting where you can reduce the blue light. Now I'm bringing this piece up because my camera, I've already tested this, shows the screen to be a lot more blue than it actually is. Now by default, this is how it is. And from looking at the camera, I can see that you can, it looks like I can tell the difference, right? But for those of you that want that more warm, natural look, you can toggle this on and off, okay? When you do turn on Game Optimizer, you do lose the ability to turn on any of the like crazy motion or whatnot. And by default, it automatically adjusts the pixel shifting technology for static images. So um, I had another user or viewer that asked me, how was the pixel shift any different than this TV? And I just gotta say that the, the game optimizer, it just, it goes a little bit further on um, performance perks versus the CX. All right, and the last piece I wanted to talk about before we go to look at the EF9500 is viewing angles. So you can see I've got two seats here. This is my sweet spot seat and two seats there. So let's see here, just looking at it. For those of you that are on the fence about an OLED or if you're thinking about getting it, this or maybe a QLED from Samsung. Here's the sweet spot. Center mass. Give it to you with the lights off. Go to the other two seats. Content is shot in 4K, 30 frames. Right, this TV looks the same everywhere. Now I'm looking at my camera and I think it's a setting on my camera. The screen looks blue. So in person, it does not look blue. Even with the setting on, it doesn't look blue. As It doesn't look as blue as it does on camera. So just keep that in mind. I, I think it's my camera. It's gotta be my camera. This is a Sony ZV-1. Um, I haven't really tinkered around with the settings on this. So I think that's what it is. So we're gonna go upstairs now and look at the EF9500. All right, we're gonna get right into the meat of this video. What kind of concerns should you have if you purchase an OLED? This is an EF9500, 65 inch, manufactured, so 2015, so right now, six years old. Bedroom TV. The red dot you see is not a dead pixel moving or anything like that. Um, it's from the camera. I don't know what kind of content I can show on here before it's copywritten or something like that. So I don't know. I'm just going to have to experiment with this. So let me pause this right here. Okay. Welcome to my bedroom. All right. These lights in the daytime, they let in a lot of sun. So this is why I'm going to be getting a a G1 for the bedroom. But this is the EF9500, and I've had this TV, as I said already, for about six years. Watch this TV all the time. Um, this TV does not have any kind of pixel shifting technology. Obviously, this is like generation one 4K OLED. They have the EG9600 prior to this TV. It was curved 65 inch, and it only had HDR through streaming. This is the first OLED to have HDR 
through HDMI. So if you were like me back in that time, you invested in the 4K Blu-ray player uh, for high dynamic range, then this is the one you got. This was the best TV. This was the greatest TV ever <laughs> in 2015. You know what I'm saying? Um, my opinion, close second to this was Samsung JS9500. That was their last, not their last, that was their last 3D model. Um, first TV, 4,000 nits of brightness. This is only 450 nits of brightness, um, but amazing TV. So let me get you guys into some more content on this TV just so you can kind of see what it looks like and we'll have more of a discussion on um, any issues or concerns that I've had with it. All right, so number one, I'm using a fire stick for this, a 4K fire stick uh, for reasons that I think are obvious. This TV doesn't have Disney Plus. There's gonna be just a lot of apps that it doesn't have. And so um, no way for me to be able to watch certain content on this TV without getting a smart device. Uh, this TV does not have great input lag. Like it's horrible, absolutely horrible. Um, for the person that's a casual gamer, it's going to be acceptable, I suppose. Um, but for me, it was just never really good. Um, just too much input delay um, when you're trying to play this for games. But it's an amazing, amazing uh, movie TV. Prefer this TV in a dark room um, when you get to a lot of um, natural light into your room, then. You're gonna have issues with it um, if you're sensitive. Me personally, you know, it, it does fine, but I can see there's time for change. All of the OLEDs that I acquired prior or after this one and leading up to me having the C1 now downstairs, pretty much got rid of them. Um, but every year they've gotten better with it. But there's just something about this TV that's just special. Uh, it's unique in its own regard. It has a proprietary mount. Um, as you can see, I don't have it mounted on the wall. I've got it um, just sitting on a TV stand. And uh, it's got three HDMIs, um, which was really weird too, a few USBs. Um, but great TV, no major concerns. The design was attractive. There wasn't like a gallery series of this TV. This was the gallery, uh, whereas to the EG9600 was kind of like um, the number two model, if you will. Um, but, you know, the base... There's a piece of glass that uh, separates the base and the TV. But overall, great TV, man. I don't have any burn in or anything like that. This video was brought to you because a, a viewer asked me about that. Um, just an amazing uh, showcase of technology. I'm glad to have been able to afford to own this um, and just seeing where we are today with the C1. Um, there's nothing like having an OLED, just nothing like it. Crushed blacks are pretty good. Um, viewing angles are perfect. You can look at this thing from any angle and still gonna be consistent. And that's what you're gonna get still with the technology today. Um, so just wanna go over a few talking points with you about some different things and that's gonna wrap this video. Okay, this TV was junked out by Best Buy. Um, I do have two probably more than two, but two noticeable red dots in the TV. They are so small, I couldn't even find them now, right? Um, I know that they're there because at the time when they were there, I was able to put some scotch tape over them so that they would be notated with the TV. Um, I have no burn in with the TV, um, no noticeable burn in, right? As I said, there's no pixel shifting technology to kind of prevent, prevent you from having static images. I've never used this as a gaming TV. Um, when I first got the TV back then, I hooked the PC up to it and the console just to kind of test the blacks. And, you know, it was it was a beautiful experience, but it's too much input lag. Um, but I used it aggressively as a movie TV at the time when I got it. I had broken down my garage and, and made it a theater room. So it was a very impressive showing. Um, but I would encourage you to always get, into, get, get yourself some kind of warranty. Um, if you're in the States, you know, Best Buy exists. And so... If you're going to be investing thousands of dollars, like this TV was seven grand uh, when it came out back in 2015. So if you're willing to spend seven grand, if you can afford to, you definitely want to be spending that extra thousand dollars or 800 bucks on a five year warranty. 